Jackery, an American company that make portable power systems, contacted me recently and asked me if I would be interested in reviewing one of their products. This is the Jackery Explorer 240 portable power station with a pure sine wave inverter mounted on the top that delivers 230 volts at 200 watts with 400 watts peak and 240 watt hours. It's basically designed to take out and about with you, put in the back of the car or keep in the house for power cuts, that sort of thing. And it's kind of like having a generator that uses the batteries instead of petrol to generate electricity. I have a narrow boat and when we're out and about on the narrow boat and we're not connected to the shore power, this is a setup I use for accessing the internet, watching YouTube videos and that type of thing. And you'll see that I've got a TV there. This is a 4G router. There is a mini PC and the PC has got a little dongle there for the keyboard and the mouse which are battery operated. So that is my complete setup and I've tried to keep power down to a minimum so that when we're on the boat we're not draining the batteries. But I'm going to run that now off this Jackery unit. I'll turn on the power. I'll turn on the PC. You can see that the 4G router's on. The mini PC is on. I'll turn on the TV now. It's drawing 54 watts. This stuff is all in a bag and it moves backwards and forwards between the boat and home. So if we have a power cut at home, I can access the internet and do normal sort of things, even video editing with this setup using this power bank. It is possible to be charging the power supply while you're using it. And the manufacturer says that's perfectly fine. There's no issue with that at all. So let's take a closer look at it. This is the input. This is where we charge it. It will take anywhere from 12 to 30 volts. The supplied power supply is 19 volts at 3.4 amps. You can see it's got two 5 volt 2.4 amp USB connections, a 230 volt 200 watt AC connection which is pure sine wave. That means it can run delicate equipment like televisions directly off the 240 supply. If it wasn't pure sine wave you wouldn't be able to operate things like TVs with it. It's got a display there that gives you information like the input, the output and the charge level. This is a 12 volt lighter socket the sort of thing that you get in the car for cigarette lighters. It supplies 12 volts at 10 amps, so that's 120 watts. Every output has its own switch. So you have to switch the switch on to use the output. So at the moment I've turned on the two USB outputs. These outputs actually use a small amount of power. Now if I put the 240 volt output on, you can see it's at 100%. There's nothing going in. But if we wait a second, you'll see there's an output and it's gone up to 11 watts. Now, as far as I can tell, the inverter uses somewhere around 10 watts output, just standard output. So all the time the inverter's on, it's going to be using about 10 watts. Now, that is normal for an inverter. They do use power to work. So that is why you need to turn it off when you've finished using it. I checked the weight of the unit and it's just over 3 kilograms. It was 3,074 grams. So I've connected a cordless power tool and a mobile phone to the USB outlet. Jackery say that you can expect this power pack to charge you know, an, a standard sort of mobile phone 25 times. So let's have a look at some practical applications now. This is a chainsaw sharpener. That's showing at the moment 36 watts. Now as you can see that's going to work absolutely fine outside. So if you wanted to sharpen your chainsaw outside you can make a little jury rig like this, take it out with you, take your power pack out and you're away. So recharging an 18 volt battery. So that's now on charge and it's drawn about 30 watts. Remember this makes absolutely no noise so you can use it virtually anywhere. Nobody will be like complaining about a generator running or anything like that. The only thing that's limiting you is the amount of power in the battery. This is a Proxon Mini Multi-Tool. It's 100 watts, so you could take this outside. That's showing about 105 watts. So you've got about two hours use out of that, slightly more than that. But I'll show you something else that this thing can do as well. This is an ideal setup for sharpening tools on the work site if you don't have electricity.
but you can see if you pair it with something like this proxon tool you can do an awful lot with it you can sand grind polish all sorts of stuff you know, so if you're out in the woodland and your axe gets blunt there you go there's your answer very quick and efficient so if you want to do some small routing jobs so you want to route out a hinge recess for a gate something like that this Dremel is 175 watts so this thing should be capable of running it now I've just done that very quickly but you can see the potential there if you've got a small job like that to do you can take this outside I reckon you'll get about an hour and a quarter with that so remember if you've got little jobs that you want to be doing outside you're away from the power you've got all sorts of options with multi tools like this and one of these power packs now I actually think this is a smashing product but I do have a slight issue with it and that is because it's been converted to the UK market for a three pin plug I think in the States and various other places where they have the 110 outlets and stuff, it's just two pins going in. The UK plugs always have the cable coming out downwards and it's usually reinforced at the beginning. So when you actually connect this to this power pack, it won't sit down on the floor properly and it stresses the cable. Now, I don't think that's a big issue. Now, personally, I think the way that they should have actually got around the problem of converting it for the UK market is to actually make it so that the UK plug comes out at 90 degrees with the cable coming out of this side. This power generator has got four different charging options. The first obvious one is to plug it into the 240 volt mains with the power adapter and it goes on charge. The next option, a generator. Now this, I think, is probably the worst way to charge it. The third alternative is to use a solar panel. Now Jackery sells solar panels for the units and so do other companies that are quite readily available but it must have an 8mm connector so you can connect it to the front of the unit. The last alternative is to charge it using a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket in your car or whatever vehicle you're driving in. They provide a lead for that with an 8mm connection on the end and that I think is an excellent way of keeping this in charge while you're travelling around. So out of the box the unit is charged up to 29%. Now I'm going to plug in the power supply and it's a 19 volt power supply. I'll put that in the input. As you can see, we've got an LED there to say that we're charging. And you can see that the input is at 61 watts. So we're at 98% now and you can see that we've got 14 watts input. Now that's what I'd expect to see as the battery charges up. So it's only got 2% to go. So that's it fully charged now. It took three hours and 55 minutes to go from 29 to 100%. This is the packaging. Inside the box we've got the Jackery Explorer 240 power station, a set of instructions, two little bits of paperwork about the warranty, it comes with a little pouch and then inside the pouch you'll find a power supply with a UK 3 pin plug. There is also a 12 volt charging lead with a car lighter adapter. The power supply and the 12 volt charging cable fit neatly inside this little pouch. When Jackery asked me to review this product it took me a long while to make my mind up whether to do it or not but I'm really glad that I did because I think it's a smashing piece of equipment. Now I can see me using this all the time. I mean we live in an area where we have quite a lot of power cuts and this thing will barely route in a power cut. It can keep you online, charge your phones, just generally allow you to do the things that you really need to do but can't do when the power's out. Now also in the woodland and on my property, if I go down in the woodland I can sharpen my chainsaw now, actually sharpen an axe, that type of thing, so it's going to prove quite handy for that. On my boat this will prove really handy as well, it's a backup power supply and it also means that I can actually surf the net and that type of thing without using the inverter on my boat and the inverter on my boat uses quite a lot of standing power because it's a big inverter so if you've got a caravan or a mobile home or a boat this thing will prove really useful so if you're out and about in the wilderness and you pair this with a solar panel 
you actually end up with a solar generator and that can keep you going and in communication with people while you're out and about in the middle of nowhere. So there are a lot of uses for this thing and I can see it proving useful in a lot of situations. Some of them emergency situations. I'm really glad that they asked me to review it. So I think it's a smashing product. I hope you found this review useful and thank you for watching.